Welcome everybody to the Bard Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, February 10th. Um, before we get started, I uh, wanted to have a call for a moment of silence for the passing of a major figure in Arlington's uh, history. Ed Burns has passed away, uh, teacher, coach, husband and father, 50 years of coaching in the high school, Arlington High football and hockey. He was inducted into the Massachusetts High School Hockey College of Fame, and he's considered the Dean of Hockey Coaches here in Massachusetts. And of course, we have our rink uh, named after him uh, because of his recognized his contribution to the town, and uh, he's going to be missed. So a moment of silence, please. Thank you all. First up on our agenda is the consent agenda. We have the minutes of the meeting of January 27, 2014, and a reappointment of the Board of Youth Services, Joan Larrick. I see Joan here, okay. Uh, do we have a motion? Move approval, second. Motion and a second. I do have one amendment to the minutes uh, underneath new, and I apologize for not catching this before the meeting to circulate, but uh, under new business, I have, it was at the Arlington Housing Corporation. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the manual meeting that I went to, and Marianne's got that. So if the board would please yeah. that. With that amendment, are there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Next up is oh no, sorry. Are we? Is Michael Stern here? Is that gonna? Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna do that. I think real quick before the uh, that we talk about Minuteman. So employing number three up. Uh, we have appointment to the Vision 2020 Standing Committee. Michael, could you come on up to the microphone? And we've had your application or you know, your resume and stuff like that. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're thankfully volunteering for this position? Yeah, I, I hope I can summarize it well. Um, I have two kids at Brackett. I've lived in town for uh, 13 years. Um, casual conversation amongst parents grew into uh, the desire to start meeting. Um, we, as we got together, we figured we'd want to talk a little bit more. Had another meeting last summer, met with Jeff Thielman. Where should we go from here, Jeff? And he had a couple of ideas. Bumped into the co-chair of um, Vision 2020, Mary Harrison. Noticed that there had, was not a Vision 2020 uh, education group. <coughs> she said, Mike, would you want to chair it? I said, sure. Uh, made a presentation. Uh, Kathy Bodie was there. Uh, had a number of ideas that we wanted to pursue. People seemed to like it, and that's the, uh, how, the, the genesis. Excellent. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Kevin? Uh, thank you very much for your willingness to serve and taking this in initiative. Uh, makes a big difference. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion? Uh, I move, move approval. Second. Uh, move motion, a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Next up, we're going to go back to number two. We're going to talk about Minuteman School Regional Agreement. We have a combination of myself, uh, town manager, and Charlie Foskett. Uh, and we, so we have in our packets, just so uh, we have the proposed, we have, a, of course, the existing regional agreement with uh, the Minuteman. We have a red line version of what the changes are. And we have a two-page summary of some of the dip changes. And in particular, so the, the school, the Minuteman School Committee has recommended approval of this new regional agreement by a vote of 13 to three, which is to say that it's coming before town meeting for us to approve. And so we're gonna hold an official hearing about that at a later date, in, in like a warrant article hearing. Uh, however, Charlie served for Arlington on the regional agreement uh, committee for many months uh, through the summer and fall and he's being asked to um, make public statements about, the about this draft regional agreement. And what he asked, was, and I think made a lot of sense, was that he did not want to be out in front of us, as in he didn't want to be saying things that you know, Arlington wasn't likely to support as a whole. And so while we've had regular meetings with the town manager um, of groups including uh, Steve DeCourcy from the Finance Committee, Laura Morissette, who's our representative on, on Minuteman, uh, we've had uh, some conversations with Tony Lionetta, who's on the Minuteman School Building Committee, um, Charlie, myself, Al Tosti, Adam. So th there's been like a lot of communication. It, 
see, it was in Charlie's opinion, and I completely agree, it was right for the board to consider, talk about it, make sure that, and then kind of give Charlie the green light to go do what he had to do. So that's all framing what I think we should talk about or what the changes are here. And I want, at the end, I would hope to take the board's temperature and uh, get a general agreement that we're, that's, we've been proceeding in the right direction and we should continue mm -hmm. to do so. So all that said, Adam or Charlie? I think I'll, if Charlie's comfortable, defer to Charlie to walk through the work of the Regional Agreement Task Force. Thank you for coming, Charlie. I know you're double booked. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. <coughs> uh, members of the board, thank you, Adam. Um, just like to touch on three things here. First of all, a brief history of the agreement for those of you who um, may not remember it or may not have been around when it was first started. Um, I'd like to briefly touch on five principal areas where the agreement's proposed to be changed and then uh, what the uh, regional agreement subcommittee has recommended and what the school committee has supported. Uh, first of all, you, you may recall that the agreement was first crafted in 1970, that's 44 years ago, and it's almost universally considered a very complex situation and sometimes described in somewhat worse terms. It's been modified uh, three times, once uh, changing the budget year, once for admitting new members in 1979, and then in, in uh, 1980, the school uh, committee members' terms of office were adjusted. In the last three years, prompted by actions of the Arlington Town Meeting and the Board of Selectmen related to the proposal to come up with a new capital project for the uh, Minuteman School District, uh, there has been a general uh, movement and study towards revising the agreement. I believe that the Board sent a letter to the uh, school district requesting that the agreement be revised and improved. About a year ago, the Minuteman School Committee formed the Regional uh, Agreement Amendment Subcommittee called RAS, R-A-A-S, and Laura Marset and I both served on that. In by the, uh, we, we worked on this from about March until October. In October, the committee came up with a re revised agreement. It was subsequently um, revised again, both by suggestions of the Minuteman School Committee and the Department of elementary and secondary education, DESE at the state. And that, that agreement, as revised rec by recommendation of the Minuteman School Committee and the DESE is what's before you in, in those packets tonight. The five areas where the agreement's been changed are generally in the subject of weighted voting, uh, admitting new membership, the capital cost allocation, an exit path from the agreement, and in incurring debt. These are all pretty uh, complicated subjects. I'm not going to go into all of the detail, but let me just say that the first one in the area of weighted voting, um, for most school committee mit uh, matters now, 50% um, um, it requires 50% of a weighted vote where the weighting is proportional to the student population in the district. And in budget matters, it requires two thirds of the weighted vote. Now, since Arlington provides 33% or 35% of the students, this is actually a provision that's quite beneficial to Arlington in terms of influencing the committee. With respect to incurring debt, it requires two-thirds of the Minuteman School Committee plus following the general law, uh, Chapter 71, Section 16 D and N, we'll talk about that in a minute, and um, three-quarters of the non-weighted non vote to amend the agreement or to admit new members. And, and when I say, uh, and also not just the, the three quarters of the non-weighted vote of the school committee, but also three quarters of the communities uh, in the membership. With respect to new membership, and, and, pr and by the way, prior to the, the existing agreement requires uni unanimity on almost every subject. And consequently, it's very hard to get things done because there's 16 members in the district and, and they don't always agree. Um, under the proposed agreement, uh, th three quarters of the member communities could accept new members into the district, which is good because we need new members to absorb the uh, increasing costs of building and, and operations. And, and having more students in a building or in a, in a district that was originally designed for uh, 1,100 students and now has about 500 is, is an important consideration. And in, and in the new agreement, the Minuteman School Committee can uh, negotiate a ramp of capital costs with incoming members so that they ramp from zero to full capital burden uh, over a period of about four years. And this was set up to um, encourage new, new members to enter the uh, district agreement. The area of capital cost allocation is a, is a major change and this has substantially benefited Arlington. 
First of all, uh, in the recommended agreement, uh, each community is supposed to pay 1% of the debt service for any capital cost. So that means that 16% of the cost is spread equally over all of the towns. Then 50% is based on student population derived from a four-year weighted average. And then the balance is based on something called combined effort yield, which is a state metric related to uh, wealth population and other and the, the DESC foundation budget. Um, so, so you have three components really, a fixed assessment for each town, population, and then something that's tied to, to wealth, which uh, will tend to help uh, communities that aren't quite as wealthy as other communities. Uh, Arlington, it, it turns out, comes out pretty well in this arrangement uh, on a, if we assume something like a 35 or $40 million capital uh, program, uh, if that debt were to be incurred, Arlington would come out two or three hundred thousand dollars a year better than under the prior uh, prior arrangement. So that's a, a pretty good uh, improvement. Okay, so now we have to get into the complicated part of this. First of all, because um, all of that was the right, easy I was part. Saying that was easy. <laughs> that was the easy part. <laughs> okay. um, one of the problems in the current well, it depends on who you talk to, but <laughs> some people think one of the problems in the current agreement is that there's no way for the town to exit the agreement. Arlington, unless this agreement is amended. Arlington is in it for life unless 15 other towns agree that Arlington could leave. Uh, under the proposed agreement, a town could exit based on a three-year um, three notice if, the town, if its town meeting so, so votes and if a majority of the members of the district do not disapprove. This is, in other words, 50% would have to hold, more than 50% would have to hold town meetings and disapprove of the exit. And, f and also, uh, the commissioner of education gets a veto, so that the, if the commissioner of education does not approve, the town could also exit. And uh, any, communi any uh, community that withdraws from the district still has to pay its debt service from prior years, whatever, whatever debt has been incurred while it has been an active member. So in principle, this benefits Arlington. But in practice, it probably doesn't, because being the, the largest community in the district, it's unlikely that the other communities would allow Arlington to exit, and it's also unlikely that the, the Commissioner of Education would permit Arlington to exit uh, because uh, we're, we're carrying so much of the, uh, of the operating costs. The last section is related to the exit strategy, and this is the, the proposed new rules for incurring debt. These, uh, by, uh, this is where the uh, Education Department got involved with respect to Chapter 71, 16D, and 16N. So um, in the agreement, first of all, the school committee, if it wants to incur debt, has to vote um, by a two-thirds vote to uh, hold a, um, a petition under 16D. And 16D requires the district to go out to all 16 towns and get each town meeting member to vote to incur the debt, say, for, for a capital project. And it requires unanimous approval under the law. If one of the communities votes against it, then they can't go forward with the debt under 16D. But there's another provision under 16N where the um, school committee can call for a referendum throughout the entire district. And uh, under that referendum, if a majority of the voters in the district who vote, vote for the capital expenditure, it can be, uh, it can go forward. Now, um, there is a way under the proposed agreement for a town to avoid these capital costs if it opposes the capital project uh, for, for which the debt's being incurred. So um, first of all, the town has to vote no under the 16D provision, in other words, veto the initial application. And secondly, the voters in the town, a majority of the voters in the town have to have voted against the um, incurring of the debt in the referendum. And under those conditions, if the town meeting, I told you this was complicated, if the town meeting votes to withdraw from the district, the, the town can then withdraw from the district, provided all the other towns don't oppose it, the majority of the other towns don't oppose it, or the commissioner doesn't oppose it. Here's the hook. If the other member towns refuse to let this town out, it's met all the previous conditions, uh, or the commissioner refuses to let the town out, the town has to stay in the agreement, but it doesn't have to pay the capital's debt service costs. Now, I realize that's all pretty complicated, but um, it, it is a way for uh, 
Arlington to sort of meander through a very complicated pattern uh, if, if we are forced to, to, or if it looks like we're going to be forced to incur a capital expenditure that the town meeting or the board of selectmen or whoever in the, in the town should be, uh, might be opposing. So uh, those are the five major changes. Uh, in very general terms, you can read the, the 12 or 15 pages of detail that you have there. The, uh, after uh, all of these meetings since last spring, the Regional uh, um, uh, Agreement Amendment Subcommittee voted in favor of the general uh, proposal that I just described to you. And as uh, uh, Chairman Dunn mentioned a couple of minutes ago, the Minuteman School Committee uh, also voted uh, in favor of that. There are a couple of loose ends that are being st still being cleaned up in the documents, but I don't think there's anything that's substantial in the period. So we pray what we'll be bringing out to the uh, various town meetings uh, in the spring. It requires a 100% vote of the 16 communities in order to get this um, re agreement revised. So I hope that gives you a little bit of background information. Uh, I'm personally uh, in favor of supporting this agreement, and I hope that uh, you know, there might be some consensus, at least at this point, before it goes to town meeting, to support the district in this. Um, I think it's not a perfect agreement. Uh, I think there are probably things that could be better, but it's a better agreement than we have now because there are some of these um, uh, changes that I have just described to you. Thank you very much. Questions? Kevin? So, um, thank you, Charlie, for your efforts on behalf of the town, as always. Um, when you said it takes two-thirds of the committee, is that a weighted two-thirds, or that's two-thirds of the 16, and your answer is going to be it varies depending on the issue? Yes. <laughs> okay. You, uh, are you referring with incurring debt? Right. I'm, I'm not sure. You had said if two-thirds of the it, committee. In, in the, the weighted vote for most matters before the committee, you know, uh, let's say paint the building or hire somebody or something like that, requires 50% of the weighted vote. For the budget approval, annual budget approval, it requires two-thirds of a weighted vote. But incurring debt and other, other aspects are s governed by state law, and they require either two-thirds or three-quarters of the member vote. Member committee member. Okay, thank you. Um, I move receipt and approval. Is that, is that the proper with Whatever is the uh, chairman. Yeah. I guess I, if the board is comfortable, I know Joe has a question at least too, if, uh, uh, Diane too. Um, if, if the board was comfortable, I think I'd prefer us to take a slightly more positive affirmation of the direction of this, okay. but only if the board so chose. So that's what I still move, and we'll come up with the wording of it at the okay. end and seeing whether the rest of the board agrees. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second, second. I'll second that. And then Diane. Um, thank you very much. This, this is one of the first rays of light that I've seen on this whole issue. I, mean, we, I think we've all been, you know, all of us have sat through town meeting and, and struggled with this over the years. I mean, we've, we've recognized this as a problem. And as, as I've thought about it, it's, um, it's a lot like the problem the country faced when we were first founded, the, the, the issue between large states and small states and, and you know, how do you um, <clears throat> fairly apportion a, a representation and um, as I thought about it, I thought, gee, a bicameral structure, that's how, the, that's how that was solved. That's why we have our Senate and our House of represent, Representatives. That's obviously not uh, practical in this case, but I think with the weighted, weighted votes and unweighted votes, depending on the situation, I think we've come pretty close to, um, to addressing that. And that's why I'm, I'm very excited about that, that, that um, it's a very creative uh, approach um, uh, to the problem. Um, I think the approach to the capital cost, it, it actually has two benefits. One is not forcing a community to take on um, uh, debt that it chooses not to take on. But also, um, I guess there is a hope, and you can confirm if this is correct or not, that, that there will be a slight incentive potentially for some non-member communities to sign up if they don't have to swallow all capital costs right, right from day one because they're, they're, they're slid in over a four-year that, That's why the uh, regional agreement's giving the school committee the opportunity to negotiate with these potentially yeah. new members. Yeah, and, and that's great. And also the use of the four-year rolling enrollments also um, prevents large fluctuations. So these, these are some of the aspects of the agreement that I really like. 
One concern I have about what's, what's transpired so far is, um, and I think we discussed this a little bit at Long Range Planning, but three communities voted against this agreement. Is there a sense that they are going to go to their town meetings and, and ask that the town meetings vote it down, or is there a sense that they may seek to initiate exit um, from the district? I, I really can't answer that. I, I've heard that um, one of the votes against it was somewhat uh, benevolent. Um, I don't know about the other two. Okay. I would add, I, similarly, it may, maybe the same community I've heard that uh, they would more than likely vote to try to approve the agreement and then move to withdraw uh, based on the size, you know, the, the number of students that they send, and that would be a better situation for them. The other two I'm not, I'm not sure about. Right, and obviously the withdrawal would be easier once, once the agreement was approved. Great. Thank you very much. Just following up on that, and then I have a different question. You may have said this, and I apologize. The three communities who voted against are... Uh, Boxborough, Weston, and Sudbury. Sudbury. Okay. Um, I only have one question, and I'm just trying to understand it, so um, I may misspeak along the w way, and I'm focusing around incurring debt, and I'm mostly reading what's in um, Section 7, and what I'm looking for is solely on behalf of the Town of Arlington in terms of incurring debt. I want to make sure the steps that Mr. Foskett outlined that I'm understanding correctly as well as do any of these steps trigger something else legally for us Arlington Relief. From what I understand for incurring debt, we follow under Mass General Law 71 Section 16D and then you cited Section 16N and then the way I read it from that, the only other resource for us is to go up to Section 4 which is to get out of the Minuteman School District. My question is, just on behalf of the Arlington, at the point of perhaps um, going along Section D and saying no, going along Section N and saying no, is there any mediation, any, any, any step that we could take besides the fact that our last step is to try to get out of the Minuteman School District, which I don't see happening, but is there anything legally that us saying no to D or to N, there's any recourse for us, there's any mediation? Or is that just not really charged? I, I, if I'm, I'm probably that, not saying it correctly. I think the mediation takes place at the school committee level. I mean, uh, we are a member of the district agreement, and I'm sure that the subject is going to be well debated at, at both steps. Okay. The agreement requires the school committee to first do 16D. If towns vetoed that, then I'm sure that will <coughs> create additional discussion at the school committee level. So. I think the subject will be well aired, uh, but I don't know that there's anything I'm just asking, specifically it seems like with respect to mediation. I mean, two, I think okay. that's a All legal right. term. All right, I, I'll, I'll leave it to others. I'm, just, I'm, I'm seeing we have those two options, those two pathways, and they end somewhere else. I was just wondering if sometimes in the legal world, something triggers something else, but it sounds like it's covered. It's going to be discussed extensively, and, and again, if we go down those roads, we may find some other avenue. But I'm in support of, um, I'm glad I don't have to represent this <laughs> in the f all the forums and venues that Mr. Foskett has. And um, I want to thank Mr. Chaplain and Mr. Dunn for all the work they've done on this. And I will look to the chairman's guidance in terms of a, a vote that he suggests to, and Mr. Guerrero. Okay. Uh, Steve. Yeah, I, I just have a couple of quick questions. Um, again, thank you for everything you did on this, Charlie. Um, so if we, if we don't support this, we're essentially stuck with our former bad deal as opposed to this deal that's a little bit better? If a single community doesn't support it, we have the existing deal. Yep. So, so that, that right there, I, I state my support for this um, <laughs> <laughs> um, off the bat. And um, with, um, with the you know, new process of uh, maybe making it easier for new members to come in, under the old process, were members being denied? Do you know? Or, mem or new members that would have no, potentially come into the, the district? The, well, first of all, it required a unanimous vote to get mm -hmm. new members in. And secondly, it required a unanimous vote to get for uh, someone to leave. Now, uh, there was, a, at one of our meetings, one of our meetings was attended by uh, a superintendent from one of the local cities who were contemplating joining the district. 
and the comment that uh, that person made at the meeting was, um, would you join a country club that you couldn't get out of? <laughs> okay, I mean, in, in other words, that's a deterrent for joining if you could never s make a decision for whatever reason to leave. You know, maybe your student population goes down, maybe you have some other choices or whatever. And, and essentially, uh, uh, Kyle, I would see it that larger communities wouldn't want to join the district because then they'd be, like us, stuck with a heavier cost of you know, the capital costs and all the other? Uh, well, you know, if larger communities join in the district, um, they won't have the same burden as, as Arlington because by definition, you know, if there, let's say there are three big towns there now, Arlington, Lexington, and, and um, Belmont. Uh, Belmont. Belmont. Uh, if there's a fourth town that joins, instead of the, the burden being carried three ways, it's carried four ways. So the, the more, <laughs> You know, if we get two or three other communities to join, uh, that will reduce the financial burden. We can hope. Thank you, Charles. Um, I did have one comment, which is I, I think related to your question, Diane, about like what the recourse would be during the, the nose. And I think, so Charlie walked us down very correctly the path of what if things aren't working, how does Arlington preserve its rights, which is to say no over and over again. And if we say no over and over again, then we do not have to pay. And it, so it's imp very important because under other proposals and like for instance in the current operational budget, we can say no as much as we want, but we're still obligated to pay. So, but the, I think it is good I think for us to think about like the, the rosy side of this and like if it actually, you know, so we pass this regional agreement, two or three towns drop out because it's not for them anymore because they're too small. We get two or three big towns to, or cities to come in, uh, we get, a. We, look, we take the uh, output of the feasibility study that's in progress right now. Uh, it, we, it's a, of a reasonable size. Arlington looks at it and the state's funding it on the right level. Uh, we pu put forward, you know, hypothetically, a debt exclusion override on the, on the ballot. We get that approval because we know what's coming because the school committee's talking about us, or talking to us about it. Then they, they put forth their proposal and under 16D, Arlington and the other towns approve it. You know, that's like the rosy scenario. That's where, you, you know, we have a good school, we've got a good process, we've got it at a good price, and we're happy at it, uh, with it. And so that's where we hope we'll be. But if we're not there, and if you have 15 towns, we're trying to build a $500 million school, you know, I picked an arbitrarily outrageous li large number, then we have a, a way out. Did I say that fairly, do you think, Charlie? I think so, yes. Okay. Um, Yes, Joe. I, I did want to note one other thing that's a uh, point that's in the grand scheme of this whole agreement is probably the, the most minor point that there is, but to my colleagues and all the moderators here, I, I do notice in the agreement that if this is adopted, the appointing authority for the school committee members for the Minuteman School Committee will shift from moderators to boards of selectmen. Did I read this correctly? Uh, not exactly. Uh, oh, okay. It has to be so voted by town meeting. Okay. It's an option. Some towns express the interest. Okay. Uh, I okay. guess I misread uh, it. Then. Yes. Unlike Arlington, some towns may not be satisfied with their moderator. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, all right. Uh, you want to yes. flip for it, Mr. Moderator? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kevin. If, if, I, if I'm a community that only has one or two students in that school, I can't imagine why I would possibly vote for them. I'm just curious, what's the hook for them? That they can get out of it now? Or? Well, okay, for, first of all, if they only have one or two students, because there's a 1% minimum capital allocation, they're gonna be paying, their, their cost per student's gonna go up. So with the right of exit, they could petition the, 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 the school, mem um, the member towns to exit the agreement in you know, if they have one or two students, probably most of the towns are not gonna object. And they could then exit the agreement and attend on a tuition basis. And, and so they, what, if their students go up, they can send a few more. If they don't have any students, they don't have to send them and they don't have to be burdened with um, additional costs. But that 1% is part of this new agreement, correct? Yes, correct. So again, why are they encouraged to increase their costs? Good salesmanship. Yeah. 
I think the answer is Kevin because they need to be out of this as much as anything. Like they exactly. need a path forward, and they know that we're like Arlington and Belmont have made it quite clear that we're not going to do capital. And so if you're sitting there sending what you know, yeah. you know, they know that this is a situation that doesn't work. Okay. Either. Okay. But I do think that you're right that we run a real you know we run a real risk if they won't say yes. Yeah, I wonder whether our side was presented at their town meeting at some stuff. But anyway, I, I think the. Uh, I think the school district and uh, Dr. Boquillen are making a reasonable attempt to educate all of the towns, and they will be doing that over the next uh, several months. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So, so what's my motion, Mr. Chairman? I think you should say that um, we support the draft regional agreement going forward, okay. and which is different from the vote that we're going to take for the, because we'll get a second bite at this when we actually have our public hearing, but for the purposes of this, I think we should vote to support the, this draft proposal. So moved. Second. So in favor. Is there any further discussion? Okay, proceed. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank, Thank you, you Charlie. Thanks, Thank Charlie. you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. All right. Citizens Open Forum is next. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Uh, before I actually even look at the audience, I will say that we, uh, at the last meeting, um, I probably let the discussion under Citizens Open Forum run longer than I would have chosen. I would have preferred to, to you know, hear it and move it along faster. And so should that happen, should we get another one or you know, something like that, I'm gonna make an effort as the chair to keep it shorter and, and move it along uh, faster. And so I just wanted to acknowledge my error and uh, tell you what I was planning uh, should it happen again. So that said, is there anyone Come on here down. <laughs> who wishes to speak? So many people and no one wanted to talk to us. For the hearings. <laughs> <laughs> They're saying. Yeah, maybe we need Mr. Leone's uh, clock for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, request. Two spaces on street overnight parking at 24 North Street. Uh, from Tammy and Gary Kalajian. Are they here? Yeah. Could you come on up to uh, the microphone, please? And just so people know what we have in front of us, we have uh, your application for, uh, for the spaces uh, related to you're on a dead end street and you've got a problem with the driveway, and we have a positive recommendation from uh, the police department on this. So if you just share us briefly what, uh, what's uh, in your application? Okay, we'll try to make it as quick as possible. I'm Gary Collegian, my wife Tammy. Um, we built the house eight or ten years ago. There was a lot of uh, back and forth between the conservation committee and the building department. They really didn't agree, didn't really talk to each other very much. Um, where we wanted the garage, the building department gave us permission to tear it down and build a new one. We tore it down and they said, oh, we're sorry, we made a mistake, can't put it back. So conservation said, well, put it over there. They said put it over there, and they did a lot of that for eight months while we paid our mortgage. Um, building department and zoning finally said put it underneath the house. We put it exactly where they want it. It put us six inches below the water table. Well, the new water table that FEMA put up, so now our flood insurance went from 400 to 4,000 a year. Um, and we can't get our cars over the hump that they made us put in. So we took out her catalytic converter in the process of going over the hump. That cost us 1,200 bucks. Um, so when we park the car, I've got pictures for you if you want to see them. Um, we got them in the, in the, we have them in the, in okay. our packet. Yeah. Uh, when we try to get the car over the hump, it, it, her car doesn't fit. My little orange one in the front of that fits because it's real small, but yeah. we get stuck in the driveway. So I've got a beautiful garage and a nice driveway that I can't, can't really use. Down. So we get ticketed. Um, I maintain the end of the street. This is my, this is my contractor that helped us build the house. He came in, he, he was there when they gave us permission and then took it away. Um, he's seen me out there. I, I take care of the street because the town, no offense, dumps a pile of snow into the wetland, which is apparently against the law. Um, so I go and shovel it out onto the sides um, and we're stuck with, I, have, you know, I don't know where to park. And when I come out in the morning and I've got you know, $50 a day in parking tickets, it gets a little frustrating. And I don't know where to go. I, you know, I didn't want the driveway there. I still don't want it there, but they didn't seem to really care too much. Move approval. Do we have a motion? C can I just declare on what you are requesting? And yeah. I'm, yeah. I could cry. I'm so sorry. If, if I gave you the rest of the story, you would. I put <laughs> the first contractor in jail I'm for I'm ready five to years. kill myself now, <laughs> please. Uh, I'm, so I'm sorry for the difficulties. 
But specifically for two spaces at this dead end part? Yeah. Is that, uh, yeah. Okay. And you were able to turn around and all of that? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Further conversation, discussion? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So this was easier at least, huh? Yeah, that was the easiest part, part, part of the process. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. Right. Thanks for living in Arlington. <laughs> Next up, we have a request for a stop sign at Longfellow Road and Highland Avenue. Uh, Highland is the more major street, and the stop sign on West uh, Longfellow westbound. It appears that perhaps it should have been there. Maybe it was there. No one knows for sure. And we have a request from parking to put it up. Move approved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. I, I would yes. like to note that uh, this request came from a web Q and A, which I like to notice ah. as well, and I appreciate the town for holding that. <laughs> that is a good one. Next up, Mystic Street Crosswalk. We received as a board an email uh, from a citizen who was looking to have a crosswalk put up on Mystic Street, also known as Route 3. And uh, we circulated that to the Transportation Advisory Committee's leadership and the parking department, uh, the Corey Raquel, and we got back negative recommendations from both of them, um, and specifically in relation to the safe, uh, safe Routes to Schools map and how they had actually evaluated this already. And they they felt that they'd made the right decision before, and they there wasn't a lot of appetite to bring it back up. Mm -hmm. uh, so, is there a motion or uh, yeah? Or Move no action. A motion and no action from Mrs. Mahan. And and I think the chairman correctly, succinctly um, stated that TAC back in 2008 um, conducted extensive surveys over many days and supplied us with all sorts of data, which um, I would ask that we can get a copy of this to um, Mr. David Von Schack, as well as um, our police departments. Um, and I don't see any of their recommendations changing over the course of time. So I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? I'm wondering if he's here. Good question. Oh, do you, do, would you like to speak or further? Or are you, if you are, come on up to the mic. And if you're, so please, I, thank you. For, I apologize for not asking. I should have asked if you were here. Um, yeah, my name is David Von Schack. So uh, I just sent this email, obviously a board of selectmen. Uh, I was not aware of any for, uh, earlier um, uh, assessment, I guess. Uh, this came out of just normal neighborhood discussions. I walk the kids pretty much to school every day. Uh, we try to not get killed uh, up there. And that's sometimes tough. Um, you know, people try every way to obviously hit us on that street. So that was pretty much the, um, you know, the request. Uh, I talked to obviously lots of neighbors uh, whose kids are also walk up there, um, and they would be obviously very much in favor of it. But if there is an assessment already by the Transportation Advisory Committee, would love to see it, uh, what their assessment was in 2008. If it all still holds up in 2014 today, then um, you know, it is what it is. Great. I Thanks. think you, I think that's right. Do you want to grab this? This is just uh, uh, so Marianne would be happy to forward it to you electronically, but now you've got the paper for the moment. <laughs> Why don't I, um, I, I could just give you the whole thing. Okay. And that's Corey's request. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for sending the letter. We appreciate it. Unfortunately, we don't always say yes. OK, so we've hit my favorite time of the whole year, <laughs> which is more yeah. article hearings for town meeting. Uh, of course, this is the first time I've ever chaired this board while we're doing that. So any feedback or guidance about if I step on anyone's toes or don't cover you know, what we should, I'm definitely um, happy to listen. We have uh, tonight, we're going to talk about articles 11, 13, 14, 15, 19, 25, and 54. So I know that uh, our town manager has asked that we table article 25, which I think uh, we should be okay with, but at the same time, we are on a deadline that we have to get our report printed so we can't table everything forever, but at the same time, this one just wasn't quite ready and it made it onto our list. So, first up is Article 11, Bylaw Amendment Town Meeting Electronic Voting. Uh, 
our moderator, John Leone, and Adam Oster, who's a member of the Electronic Voting Subcommittee. Committee? Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. We're here on behalf of the Electronic Voting Subcommittee, which consists of Adam, um, Eric, Eric Helmet, myself, Westby, Aloli Chapik, and Elizabeth Patton. This, who first? Uh, if we're doing 11, 11 that's, that's yeah. the bylaw yeah. amendment. Mm -hmm. We, Adam discovered after we passed our bylaws last year how we're going to display um, technical issue um, mm -hmm. that we may have to display too much. And he's going to explain the issue and our fix so we can make the meeting move more like we envisioned when we wrote the bylaws. So, okay, thank you. Um, uh, as I th you probably know, there is still a provision for roll call votes in the electronic system where 30 members rise. Uh, only instead of calling the roll, we display the vote um, pre precinct by precinct. We think it'll take a minute, minute and a half to do. Um, and uh, that's, that's so that people can verify to see, you know, that the vote was accurately recorded. Uh, we have, we do the same thing when the vote's really close. And um, th the purpose of that is to deter and detect e error and, and fraud and also to uh, sort of promote confidence in the integrity of the vote. Uh, and the current definition uh, of what a close vote is uh, is based on the difference between the yeses and the noes. So, you know, if, it's, if you've got 51 yeses and 49 noes, it's falls within that parameter and triggers this provision automatically. Um, it's a pretty intuitive and clear definition and it happens to be wrong, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, the problem is that uh, <coughs> if, if that, that were the vote, 51 to 49, but it were a vote on a bylaw amendment where two thirds votes I is required, that's not remotely close actually but the provision, the way it's written, would still require this display, would still trigger this, and it wouldn't actually kick in for votes that really are close, 67, 33, for example. So the correct definition is based not on the difference between the yeses and the noes, but on the margin of success of the prevailing side. Um, the, uh, the definition that we propose in the bylaw amendment that's before you uh, would flag the six closest votes that are clustered around and including the very closest outcomes. On the very last page of the handout that you have are sort of four hypothetical votes that sh I hope show that clearly the, uh, the closest possible outcomes are the very, very boldest and then clustered around each of them are six that would be flagged under this rule. And the four cases show two thirds votes and even numbers of votes and odd numbers of votes. And um, we are confident this time that this new criteria for the rule would apply to any kind of majority that might come up. Um, so this is a correction, it's not a change. We're not trying to do something new, we're trying to fix something. Um, I hope my presentation is clear enough. And I just wanted to suggest that whether it's through renumbering or some other mechanism that we might want to bring this up before the zoning bylaws, which are the two thirds vote votes that will be coming up. So it wouldn't take uh, effect till next year anyways. Right. Sorry? No, I'm just oh. saying it wouldn't take effect till next year anyways. Oh really, okay. It's approved by the um, AG. Oh, good point, thank yeah. you. Well, we recommend favorable action. Second. Motion is second. Diane? Um, point of clarification or edification or whatever, I just want to make sure that if what's going from Attorney Hine to town meeting on Article 11, we just would ask um, at the bottom of page 3 where it says 6-inch rule, I think that just should be 6. <coughs> or six. You have the... No, it's it's not saying it, that's a quote. quote well, if it's a quote, the yes then you have no. quotes on both sides. How should okay. that six appear? Right now, it looks like six-inch rule. 
If somebody could just correct that in house. What, we, the closing what we're asking you to do to make it clear is just delete the entire last sentence of the current bylaw and substitute the entire new sentence instead of trying to amend what's in there. Just throw the old one out and put this new one in, which you'll see is okay, just so going to be the individual votes. You'll always see this blade with the margin of success. It's the prevailing side calculated by subtracting the smallest number needed, the prevailing side by vote. It's less than three. What page is that on? I'm sorry. So that's page three. Page three at the bottom. Page three at the bottom. Mine yes. says two. I'm oh, okay. Says, yeah. oh, sorry. As it says three. All right. So, so, you want that. so everything from example on is up. Okay. All right. So we're not going to try and amend. All right. No, no. I saw it there. Clarity. It's it was. Easier for me to look that's fine. That you, if it's struck out, then I. And then um, I'm just wondering, and maybe you, you said what this was. You talked about, it talks in here, and maybe this is also being struck out, that um, rule is defined in terms of a mathematical t condition less than three in relation to a specific number. My question is, what is that formula right there? Is it if there's a 100 to 101 vote, a 67 to a 33 vote, something is times three? No, no, it, 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 think I'm of it as a spread. Okay. You gotta okay. beat the spread, which is less than three. Okay. If it's a spread is three or less, okay. and then it's a display. All right, but that, so I get it then. Spread vote, less than three, right. display. Go over three, we don't have to display. I only ask because in case someone asks me to explain. That's the only reason. Thank you. I get that easy because I usually beat the spread, so um, I can that's do that. That's how we have to think about it. <laughs> okay, further? Uh, Doug, do you have enough information? Yeah. All right. And, and he, Attorney Hunt can call me and Adam and we'll work it out with him. We're breaking him in, so I have to make sure that we give him all the information. Yeah. Needs, so. <laughs> He'll treat him nice this year. Good. <laughs> I've got enough. Thanks. Good. Any further discussion? All those in favor of favorable action on Article 11, recommending favorable action on Article 11, please say aye. 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 Oh, do you know what? I screwed something up. Is there anybody else who wants to speak on this article? This is a public hearing. See, I told you I, I haven't done this before. No, you caught yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do this vote again. I apologize. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? 5-0, thank you. Mr. Please. Chair, could I suggest that we take uh, 54 uh, the also? The Vice Chair already there? suggested that. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you can catch me when I don't catch Let's it. Let's talk about Article 54. Uh, are you well, well, um, again, on behalf thank of the Electronic you, Study Voting Committee, we got, last year we got approval for, to rent the system for one year. We sent out a request for proposals. The town manager did it. They got back um, two two proposals, the committee went over it, we made recommendations to the manager, and he chose option technology and um, OTI. So we're gonna have OTI's guys there this year to run the system. We got the approval last year to see if we like it. It's gonna be a beauty contest this year. So in order to judge the feel of a meeting, even though I hate resolutions, and I've said so many times, I wanted the resolution. So it'll give the meeting a chance to to speak, speak their mind. Do they like this? Do they think it's efficient? Do they like how it's working? Um, just get a, get a good feel of a meeting and give them a chance to speak up, yes or no. Um, that's the only format under which I thought we could do it. And then the next article, which is for the Finance Committee, will be, okay, you like it, give us the money. Do you wanna buy it? Do you wanna rent it? What do you wanna do? So that was my reasoning for wanting to bring the resolution. Kevin? I assume you're going to do it after. Yeah, that's the why it, it, it's um, Article 54, which is right. almost at the very end, if not the very end, and then we'll postpone the finance one until right after it. Uh, r recommend that we support the resolution, I guess. Or do we, is this a favorable action, also, Doug? For supporting the resolution, or I know? think we should just um, we should not make a mo like we should either report at town meeting or not report at all and let town meeting decide. I don't know what other people is, think. Are we required to make a recommended vote? You're not, no. You're not required not? to make a recommended vote. Oh, I don't you're think not you know. to, It's not as if you're taking no, recommending no action either. Yeah. I think we can choose to print recommend, or print language and then, you know what I mean, like that someone could use to make a motion with. Mm. And then let town meeting decide. All eyes are on me right now. <laughs> so I move we report at town meeting because I want to support it, but yeah. I understand waiting. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so we have a motion. Is there a second? Yeah, second. second. 
Okay, thank you. You okay with that, John? That's fine with me. Maybe we can just um, come up with some pr proposed language beforehand, yep. and I'd gladly help work that out if you Great. wish. Great, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. So it's our resolution, John? Um, well, the Electronic Voting Committee submitted the article, so I don't know if it's your resolution or ours. I don't think it really matters. Whatever you want, I just didn't know. Yeah, if you maybe want us it possibly should go under the committee yeah. the that resolution, and yeah. we can give a, our recommended vote was we support the use of it in the future. I mean, okay. Obviously, we, we're all in favor of it, but we haven't had a chance to play with it yet, so we'll find out. This be a public hearing. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this article? Not seeing anyone, we have a motion to report at and a, um, a, a town meeting and um, a recommendation for some language to go into the selectman's report. Doug, do you have everything you need? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. <coughs> Excuse me. Our next article is Article 13, uh, Bylaw Amendment Poet Laureate. Joe. Thank you. Friends, today we mourn a loss, a loss of one so dear, one I raised and taught, taught to aim always high, to emulate, no, surpass his father in all things. I trained him well, gave him the wings to soar, but could not restrain his youthful exuberance. Blinded by the sun, my warnings of the black, beast of hubris unheeded, he fell to his grave. Farewell, brave Icarus. May the gods pluck you up to their abode as I did once from your mother's arms. That's a poem that was written by uh, Charles Schwab, who is a 91-year-old resident of our town. It's called My Fallen Son, and it seemed uh, especially poignant given that we were remembering a fallen son of Arlington uh, earlier this evening. Um, and this was printed actually in a book that we received in our packets probably half a year ago, maybe three quarters of a year ago, called um, Getting There, that was um, uh, put together by the uh, Arlington Seniors Association. There was a, there was a uh, program that was run um, uh, introducing the seniors to, to poetry and the art of uh, writing poetry, and there's some, some real uh, gems in here. Um, after reading this, and um, after hearing Mr. Schwab at some, some events, um, after hearing uh, the, the, uh, the, the incredible poetry that, uh, that uh, accompanied the um, inauguration, second inauguration of the, the president. I, I had a little informal conversation with um, our library director this um, summer, and I asked him, I said, have you ever heard of a community um, appointing a poet uh, laureate? And uh, he said, I'm not sure. He said, I, I, I want to think about that, but I, I, I'm intrigued by the idea. And a few months went by, and he got back to me, uh, Mr. Livergood, and said, you know, I." I have found a number of communities and, and I like it and I'd like to pursue this. So I, I, I asked my colleagues to put this out here. Um, you know, over the last few years, we've done a lot um, around <coughs> promotion of the arts, we've done particularly around the visual arts. You know, we, we've, um, we've uh, town meeting supported the, the um, public art uh, fund. We, cre you know, resurrected the cultural commission. Um, this body has supported a number of visual public arts projects with Arlington Public Art. Um, but uh, I was thinking this, this is a way to kind of elevate the literary arts. Uh, any of you have ever been to the Books in Bloom that the library does? Um, there's always um, quite a few local authors, in, including poets, who are, who are on hand there. We have a lot of talent here in the town that's hidden. So I um, have put this before you, I put some supporting material um, as well. Um, uh, an example of something that was done in West Tisbury, uh, for example, um, where they, they also had their town meeting designated a, a, a poet laureate. Um, I'm envisioning this as kind of an honorific uh, position. I'm not envisioning it as, as something that, that has an appropriation attached to it, although um, if this body does um, uh, choose to, to uh, put forward a recommendation to um, the town meeting, you know, I, I would hope that we could structure it in a way that it would potentially be, you know, eligible for grant funding. If, for example, the schools, the schools in the past, for example, have had artist in residence programs, I'd love to be able to have, you know, someone who steps forward be able to participate in those and uh, be eligible to to uh, participate uh, in those. Um, unfortunately, um, some of my supporting material didn't make it into the the. Um, 
the, the packet, but I think you received it electronically. It's on the desk. I put here uh, something that I envisioned as a potential proposed vote around how this would um, would work. Um, you know, I envisioned uh, an honor honorary position that would be um, would have to be a resident of the town, possibly an appointment for a year, uh, renewable up to three years. We could talk about that. Um, and I, I laid out here what I, th I think uh, an appropriate process would be for the Board of Selectmen to appoint a Poet Laureate, but uh, based on advice of a number of other stakeholders, you know, the Library Board of Trustees, the Cultural Commission, the, um, the, the, the school committee, I, I would, well, designee of the school committee, perhaps they choose someone for the English department or whatnot, um, and maybe the town manager if uh, there was a thought um, of potentially asking a Poet Laureate to, to submit something for the annual report. Or whatnot. Uh, I think we could discuss whether or not we would want the makeup of that process in here. I would see it working similar to, to the way that we've done the um, uh, the honor awards in the past. Um, and so that that's my proposal um, in, in a nutshell. I think you have Mr. Livergood's um, uh, letter in support. I, I did receive correspondence from one of the library trustees today, uh, who was supportive um, and um, said that they were going to be bringing it up at the the board uh, tomorrow night. Um, as well. And I know that there's at least one person here um, to, to yeah. testify. But, um, be before I ask you to recognize Isaac, I, I did want to recognize one. Um, I was contacted by a uh, sophomore at Tufts University who actually heard of these initiatives and is actually here reporting on this for her uh, advanced journalism project. So uh, we're even ha by having the discussion, we're getting some of the word out to uh, <laughs> some other areas around. So, okay. Kevin? Roses are red and <laughs> I'm well, not going to be. <laughs> On this Warren article, Joe, I think I'm with you. But here's I have just a slight issue with it, which is prepare a poem for publication in the annual report of the town and to present one work at the opening of the annual town meeting. Uh, I'm I'm wondering first of all, should we check with the moderator or not? Uh, and if we do, if if we if we do do that, is not that being reported uh, as town meeting minutes enough, or is it a separate poem that needs to be for the annual report? And are we putting it in the budget section, or do you know what I mean? It's uh, to me, it's too specific. Yeah, it's yeah. A requirement of a poet. No, well, and, I, and I, I. What I, if he or she hasn't moved to? Writing a town meeting yeah, poem. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. And, and uh, as I envision this as a volunteer position, I, I, I think that's a valid, um, a valid concern. As I've looked around some of the other communities that have done this, it looks like poet laureates have really made of this what they are able to, you know, within their time, just, just like our other volunteer positions within their time. And so their would you be okay if we just it's remove that? Two. Those two Absolutely. I put this out for discussion. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not wed to this language. I'm not against it. I just, no, no, I they're, agree. they're moved to do it. I, and I want, I'm glad we got a say in this, and I'm going to ask them for a sample of their poetry, because obviously I do have a gift in that area. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyhow, so thank you, Joe. Uh, so just for the so you moved approval, right, Joe? I'm assuming. Oh, I moved approval. Yeah, that's okay. In second, second Kevin, yeah. second. Uh, further questions before I, Diane? Just where we took out the first two, um, t opening so, the town meeting and, yeah. and whatever. Just for I'm, to cover it. Were you going to say something? I was, about I was that? actually. So let's. I don't. I think that Kevin's sentiments are good. Let's not worry about the specific okay. language because Doug's going to come back to us with specific language. And what I would say to Doug is, if it were left at and to conduct readings to participate at public events and school and library programs, that we add the word "town" in there. Yeah. Can you, I'm sorry. Can you clarify where you want when to say When whatever verbiage you write, um, recognizing we're taking out the annual town meeting and. Pub publication in the annual town report. Yeah. What's left, it says, and to conduct readings and participate at public events in school and library programs. I would just ask that the word towns appear somewhere in there. Of course. School and town. I don't care the order. That's of all. Of course. Thank you. A public hearing. Is there someone in the audience who wishes to speak? Come on up. Welcome. Could you please introduce yourself and let us know what you think? Uh, my name is Liza Halley, and I live on Grafton Street. Um, I'm an Arlington resident and a deep lover of poetry. I come to you knowing the transformative power of poetry, both personally and also communally. 
Um, I experienced the transformative power of poetry in the many years I spent facilitating writing workshops and training others to facilitate those workshops in low-income housing sites, in medium security prisons, in domestic violence shelters with adults in a drop-in program for mentally ill individuals, in treatment programs with drug-affected youth, and in homeless shelters throughout the city of Portland, Oregon. I've seen people who have not had access to education become moved by, relate to, and discuss in depth the writing of great poets like Wordsworth, Oliver Olds, Lee Yates, Pinsky, and Hafiz. I've seen the way poetry has brought diverse people together to celebrate, talk, think, and transform their own lives and the lives of people around them. In my capacity right now, I'm the librarian at the Thompson School, and I just have to say that this, this is all serendipitous because in January, I did a whole month of poetry with the students um, because I hate that it's only just April when you do a poetry month, so I did it in <laughs> January. But um, I taught the kindergarten and first graders all about that we have a children's poet laureate in the United States that's not nominated, and then I think it's like a two or three year appointment, and we talked about why that's important and who they are since 2006. So then all of a sudden I saw the article about Joe wanting us, and I was like so excited. But anyway, so um, I helped initiate a poem a day project at the Thompson School. The principal reads either a published poem or poems written by Thompson students every morning during morning announcements. Think about the way this sets the tone for the day. When the day begins with six short poems written by second graders all describing their unique idea of what the moon is, how it moves them, how it looks, and adds wonder to their lives. We're all asked as we listen for the precious few moments each morning to stop, to pay attention, to awaken our senses, and to listen to those around us, to laugh and to think seriously at times about things outside our daily lives and to reach higher. Um, sorry. <clears throat> I am thrilled that Joe Curo presented the idea of a poet laureate for the town of Arlington to you all. How amazing to live in a town where even the thought has been voiced. Many towns across the Commonwealth and across the country honor poets, I mean poetry and poets enough to nominate poet laureates. In Duluth, Minnesota, for example, the poet laureate is expected to raise public awareness through readings, appearances, workshops, and other public displays, arrange for poet in the school appearances, write monthly poetry columns, with reviews of books and poems, organize poetry workshops at local libraries, create poems for specific occasions, help organize an annual citywide poetry event, select poems for display in local city buses, billboards, and postcards, and be available for a meal a month in a local restaurant. I don't know, I, I, I know I don't want to take up a lot of your time, but let me just take a moment to share how I think a poet laureate can enhance the lives of the Thompson kids and my own fellow citizens in Arlington. The Poet Laureate could visit schools and classrooms, sharing his or her love for poetry with Arlington students, maybe even getting students to write their own poems, help bring in other poets into the school to share their words and writing advice, serve as a resource for teachers and administrators hope, hoping to bolster their own initiatives, uh, poetry initiatives in schools, and share meaningful, moving, or even hilarious poems at public events at, and at meetings throughout the city, and I do think there should be an ode to the finance committee as one of the things. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, to they, the board of selectmen. <laughs> a board of, right, no, right, first the board of selectmen, then, <laughs> anyway, and um, they could help, he or she could help coordinate a series of poetry readings throughout the town to bring poetry to the people, go into the senior center and senior housing to bring people together to celebrate the written word. The ideas are just beginning to flow. I have many more, but ultimately, as an ambassador for poetry, the poet laureate's presence would send a strong message to our town that no matter who you are or which part of town you live in, that we all need to tap into the power of, tree, the power of poetry has to offer. We need to take a moment to open our senses, to make connections with the big issues we all face as humans and with the snapshots of daily life, that poetry not only matters, but it's essential. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Kevin. Yeah, uh, thank you for that excellent presentation. I was for it before, I'm doubly for it now. Are you a poet? I am a poet also. Okay, yeah. you better apply for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm, I'm not very, I haven't published very much, so it probably you're gonna want somebody who's published more than I have. But anyway, I Thank still you. love writing poetry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak on this article? Any other members of the board who wish to speak? 
All those in, oh, Doug, sorry. Um, I just want to clarify something. There was a little bit of discussion as to uh, the appointment process and the recommendation of the screening committee. Joe, you had mentioned a couple of different things on that. Is there any further sort of thought or discussion on that specific point? I don't know what the sense of the board was on what's what's here. I, uh, I'm, go ahead, I just have the file. Yeah, no, I, had a I confess that I my when I had read the first draft, my initial reaction was, um, let it be the selectmen or let it be the recommendation committee and not do both. But then the more I thought about it, I did think that the proposal here was a good one. And that, um, and that so we've got, and so I personally think that this draft is good. If it came out in your discussion, if someone gave you more feedback that says that there's a different set of people that maybe should be appropriate, I would be listening. But uh, I thought that this list was fine. Understood. Kevin. Well, now that we're talking about that, it, think of the problems of pulling together this entire board with this committee to do some sort of an evaluation process. I wonder whether we should consider appointing Joe Curo and, and this, the rest of this library, uh, one designated board of, library board of trustees, et cetera, as a committee that would do the search and then make a recommendation. We're not that, that, is the, that is the intent. Yeah. That is the intent. It's the just based on the recommendation of the, of the, of the, of so the screening committee. The town manager meeting? So, so the intent is, the intent oh, so is. So we are only approval, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I think my only question to, to Doug is, is this, this issue that did come up um, when I was discussing this with some folks this, this weekend about um, the possibility if we were t to identify, for example, foundation funding or something for a stipend or an honorarium, is there anything legally that would prevent that from being permissible? It's um, a little bit of a, a broad question, but I, I can't think of anything at the moment that would okay. prevent you from doing that. I will certainly uh, take that under advisement and try to scrutinize whether or not that there'd be any concern with respect to that. But as it stands, I, I don't see a specific concern. Yeah, because the only question, that it, it, the question just arose to me because as I was doing some research this weekend, I see that there's legislation pending in the Commonwealth for a, a, a um, appellate laureate of the, of the Commonwealth. And there is actually a clause there that says that, that this individual is not considered public employee, blah, 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 et cetera. Right. I, I think that the way this is drafted <coughs> would not, I, I don't think we'd run into a specific problem with that that we couldn't deal with without having to specify something more in the bylaws. Okay. Diane? Just along that vein, I think um, what town council is saying is A, once t if town meeting recommends favorable action, and this is a town meeting vote, and, a and act of its legislature, that it will be able to apply under the umbrella of the town and schools. If not, it might ri rise with a caveat of similar to what we do with Arlington Arts Council and other groups where the Board of Selectmen takes an additional step. Yeah. So I guess I would leave it to Mr. Caro and town council to find out if just by the sheer vir virtue of the town meeting vote that legally everything is covered that they can apply for grants whether it's town school otherwise and if not if we have to take that second step that we take with other <coughs> arts cultural commission and not just arts there are some other yeah. um, other uh, groups in town that we do that but I'll leave yeah. that to Mr. Carroll in the church Actually, I th but I think we're okay to proceed okay. with it as is thank you thank you uh, Kevin did you have anything else no is no, there any further you. discussion all those, uh, Doug, you're okay? Yes, thank you, Mr. All Chair. those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero, <laughs> recommended favorable action. Next, bylaw amendment, public music, Joe. Thank you very much, and I want to thank the board again for placing this um, on the warrant. Um, I um, bring this to the board. Um, I think this was a matter of discussion at uh, town meeting uh, last year, that we have a, a very short um, one-line um, bylaw uh, currently that says that uh, public, let's see, where is this? No person shall sing, play on, or operate any musical instrument in any public way or solicit or receive compensation, therefore, from bystanders of the public without first having obtained a license from the selectmen who are hereby empowered to grant such licenses with such restrictions as they may deem necessary. Um, I'm asking the board to, to refine the bylaw first and foremost to, to, um, to make clear that the bylaw applies not only to public music but also applies to other types of uh, public performance 
and to recraft it in a way that, that does not appear to be as, um, uh, how, how can I say this, um, uh, restrictive or, 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 or dissuading folks from, from um, going through this, uh, uh, for, from um, participating. This was raised at town meeting last year that, that there is uh, an inferred prohibition, although you know, we do have the ability to, do, to, to, to grant these licenses. And we have a, a number of other requests that have come up, not only for, not only around busking, this, and this isn't just around busking, but it's also with uh, street festivals, we've had requests. We know that the Visitor Information Center will be going in with a, um, with a performance plaza, and we don't really have a framework to handle that. Um, I'm recommending a relatively short but longer bylaw change than we have right now on the books to cover uh, street performances and make clear that we do encourage artistic expression. And I'm asking that um, should this be approved that at a later date the, the board um, adopt some more, more specific um, regulations and, and procedures around this so that people understand the rules of the game. And I have a model policy that, um, that I did um, include here uh, for you. I'm not asking for, for approval or, or, or debate about the specifics around that because I would expect that would be a separate hearing around uh, policy and regulations. I will only say that, that what is here um, was something that I had um, kind of worked on as a, kind of an amalgam of three different communities that I found in the Commonwealth that, that do regulate uh, this type of performance. And they all seem to be coming from a common root as, as so often happens. Um, I think we had discussed this. We had actually put this in the court of the Cultural Commission and said that we, we did support moving forward on this, but I, I want to take the advantage of, of um, having town meeting to uh, move the ball forward. And that's why I, I, um, I bring this to you. And I, and I did want to thank Mr. Heim, who, who had helped me with um, looking at some of this language up front. And I also know that there's at least somebody here, at least one person here to testify on this. So. And you move. And I move. <laughs> I'm assuming you are. I move favorable um, action, you know, subject to the, subject to final approval of the language brought forth by the town council. Yeah, um, one quick question. Um, so there's really no policy change. This is just a softening of tone? Correct. That is, co well, it's a softening of tone, but it also is, is making clear that we're not referring only to uh, public music, but other performance, dance or spoken word or. Okay. Jungling. Or <laughs> okay. I, I, I mean, I, I, I will second. I, uh, I, it sounds nice. Kevin? So I just want to be clear. We will, at a further date, go through each of these regulations, or this is what will be put before town meeting? No, I'm, I'm, I'm recommending that, that just this first, this first page or something approximating this first page around proposed vote, which, which simply has the purpose and definitions um, and the fact that a permit is required yep. um, laid out, that we put that before town meeting to, to uh, make clear. Then I'm recommending that at a future, assuming town meeting, um, goes along that at a future date that we have a hearing around regulations, something like what I've, yeah. I've put here as a model. Okay, so I support that. The, uh, I just wanted to point out one thing on the regulations under amplification, which is on the bottom of the third page, number eight, right? They can't use any amplification equipment after 9 p.m., but you're allowing performances until 10 p.m. on sa Friday and Saturday. Yeah, I would think that we, sh we could debate. I'm not looking to debate the specifics on that right now. All right, okay, yeah, I'm just, but I yeah. didn't already know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. I favor. Okay. Recognizing that we're just right now starting off to vote page one, yep. which is, as Joe, Mr. Carroll said, purpose, definition, and permit. Just for, um, I know Mrs. Bongiorno's here in town council, um, I would just add into when we have a future conversation, um, language around enforcement. Um, I know it has language in here that a police officer may enforce um, crowds that are obstructing at the request of the performer. I'd probably want that um, magnified a little bit more, seek some guidance either from Mrs. Bongiorno or the town council or the police department, what they feel should be the proper ver verbiage for them when they're their authorizing agent or appointing an authority, similar to when we have events here right. in town hall, 
Um, the other thing it, that it, I didn't see in there is, um, and again, we're gonna discuss this at a future meeting, so I just wanna sort of give a heads up. If we have any discussion in there regarding preclusion of collecting monies or anything around that type, whether, whether we are gonna allow the performer to do that, whether we're not gonna allow the performer to do that, if we are gonna allow, what are the caveats, what are the steps um, that go to that. And then the only other thing that I would just add um, for our future discussion is I know when, um, and I believe Christine's been involved with this with Joe Conley, when we did the lights and the sound system over at the Warren A. Pierce Field, along with the school committee, we came up with certain guidelines, not only around decibels, but also around um, performance language. And I raised that with the Dillboy situation that we've had, where um, they played certain of their performers and certain of their songs have been played, and there is language you can put in there that says basically you have to, if you're going to amplify or not amplify, you have to live to a certain standard. So you're not getting certain words. I remember standing over by the Fox Library School and you could hear a, a song coming out with some really strong language. But we have that already that, you know, Christine, Joe, and others have done for the Warren A. Pierce Field. So whatever language you all, along with town council, feel is appropriate around that, if we can, not that these performers are gonna do it, but you know, when we get to that discussion, that's the only things I would add. Joe. I would just say I think that that's precisely why I'm suggesting that the bulk of this be moved into regulation so we have that, that flexibility to, to have those conversations and make those decisions just, just as we've done with, you know, hackneys and, and uh, other licensing matters before this board. It seems to be consistent. With our, oh, our and practices. my only other thing would be to make sure we put whatever, um, uh, I don't want to say protection, but whatever we need in there regarding like town day events. I know. Different okay. people find different ways to try to get in. So. so I guess my question is, is there anything under A, B, or C, you know, the, the, which is essentially the meat of what we're talking about that you have that we should be talking about? I don't, I just want to make sure that you're No, no, I was, really I was, okay, no, I was just saying, I thought okay. that the town council was going to draw up remarks so we'll come back and talk about policy, regulations. See, so I don't maybe think, I yeah, see, the, it, it, Joe's motion, as understood, unless, you know, unless we choose to modify it, is that this part where it says model regulations is just for us to look at right now and obviously it's a public document that anyone can see. But what we actually are gonna put in the packet for the selectman's report is gonna be something like this, whatever the language that Doug comes up with that we then approve, that's just the bylaw amendment and we will make a reference in our note to the fact that we will write re re regulations, which may look like this, but we're not gonna actually put these regulations or anything like them in the packet. Right. That's what Joe's. That is the What that it is, is, is I'm trying not to have a third meeting on this. What, oh. what I'm understanding is I read this when I got it in my packet. Yeah. We're only voting on page one tonight. Yeah. We're going to so have a second meeting. If you don't hear my thoughts now, then we're going to have to have a third meeting. I think that's so. If we have. So I've already read this, and those are the things I would put before. Okay. And I'm not saying I'm going to get three, four, or five of my colleagues to agree on all five of those yep. points. I'm just trying to limit it so there's not a, another yeah. meeting. On if this. town meeting happens to approve this, we will have another meeting on this. In right, I don't want to have a meeting after <laughs> that. Oh, okay, all right. That's what I'm okay, trying to get rid of the big mouth. That makes sense. Okay. okay. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wishes to speak on this? Um, Rolly. If you could introduce yourself to the millions of people watching at home, please. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I really hadn't intended to speak on this, but when Joe Curo mentioned the Arlington Cultural Commission, um, a light bulb went off, and so I suggest that I see a copy of what has been written so that we can work together with Joe and other folks in coming up with some solutions on this issue. Putting on my Robbins Farm hat, um, the whole issue about money <laughs> and major events becomes a problem because we do hold a very large event July 4th and we don't charge for that, we collect money past the hat and we sell refreshments and what have you, but it's something we need to look at and so both of those concerns that I have, I think you need to know about, and then we're more than happy to work together to get it resolved. Joe? I did, I did want to note that I had uh, forwarded an earlier draft of this to the, to the chair, 
to the Cultural Commission chair, but uh, I, I'll, I'll forward the updated materials because I understand Stand there's a change. Please, I understand yeah. there's a cha change going on. <laughs> yeah. And I also, just to uh, reassure you, the, the bylaw that we seek to change only, only um, covers the public ways. It's not, it's not dealing with the parks. Oh, okay, that's, that's fine. That's under the jurisdiction of the park. And that's park. good. That's so good. actually, it does mean, uh, I actually did have a similar question. And so Doug, when you uh, write this, uh, definitions B under public areas, uh, the more we can clarify what this does and doesn't apply to, because that will be a point of confusion. Oh, yeah, I think that's there is like a mistake there. Parks. Yeah, that's a Play copy. Parks that's a playgrounds. Yeah. yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. And I, that's it wrong. may be, do we want it to include, so obvious public ways, yes. Do we think that it includes um, other areas that are under, the ma under, for instance, the selection of the town manager? I don't know. So the this parks are, would be under parks and rec. The school would be under school. Right. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I just, yeah, um, because it's an amendment to um, the public ways bylaws, mm -hmm. um, technically speaking, we would have to reformat the, the article itself to notice something beyond that. At this point, it's just limited to public ways, which covers a lot. I mean, it okay. covers all sidewalks and streets, basically, in Arlington that are considered public ways. There might be some issue with some private ways, but I think those are going to be residential streets where you wouldn't have this type of thing anyway, or you'd be very unlikely to. So uh, with respect to the public areas, I think that's the only thing that needs to be clarified. I think Mr. Kiro had actually clarified that in a previous version of the warrant article, but, but not this. Um, uh, proposed vote. I yeah. have an understanding of the board's intentions. It's a copy paste error from another ordinance. That's why we get to vote with the final language. So, that's Mr. Chairman, are yeah. you saying it three ways or public ways? Public ways. I will leave it to the I town council. I think it's just public ways. Right. But it's going to be public ways. And in, in effect, it will be public ways. And I'm sure that he'll provide language that, that says that. Okay. And I just want to note for the board that there's there would be separate processes that would make it available this type of thing available for public areas or areas within the control of the town manager or something like that. It's not to say that, that, that this type of thing would be forbidden there per se, it's saying this process affects basically sidewalks and streets, yeah. which is basically what most busking is oriented towards, I think. So, so really my interpretation of that is that this proposal is not going to affect what happens at Robbins Par Park in any way, shape or form, except I'll, I'll for I'll if somebody is out on the sidewalk. Yeah, I'll report that tomorrow night at our regular meeting. But I still say that we would be more than happy as the c commission to work with Joe in coming up with some proper language. Okay. I think at this point it's Joe and town council. Okay, fine. All right. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you. Further comments? Please come on up. <coughs> Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Ted Sharp and. Uh, I, I am a busker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do it very often, and, and never in Arlington. <laughs> um, but from time to time, I will go out on a street corner, take out my violin, leave the case open, play a few tunes, and hope that somebody throws in a buck. I'm not proud of it. Oh, heck. Come on, shucks, I am proud of it. It's, it's really fun. It's a great opportunity to hone your performance skills in a low-key, non-threatening kind of way. I'd also like you to think just for a second about, think of the places that, that just occur to you off the top of your head where street performers, where you might go and hear public music. Austin comes to mind, New Orleans comes to mind. Boston comes to mind. Harvard Square comes to mind. These are all places people love to go and shop and dine and hang out. It's a good thing for the community. It's fun for everybody. The tourists love it. It's a good thing. My saga with this starts about six years ago and I had started to do a little busking in Harvard Square, and I said, you know, sometimes I don't feel like going all the way down, you know, getting on the 77 and going all the way down to the square. I'd like to go out to Broadway Plaza and just kind of hack around a little bit. Um, and uh, so I, I said, oh, there, there's probably a permit or something I have to get, and I went and I looked up the bylaw, and it said, oh, oh, I just get a license from the selectman. Okay, no problem. I went by town hall, asked Ms. Kropelka about it, and she said, you want to do what? A license? 
So the, the problem was, of course, that the bylaw said I had to get a license and the selectmen weren't about to offer me one. There, there wasn't any process or procedure. And this does, in fact, change the status quo. If you approve this language, which I hardly hope you do, uh, you're kind of committing to actually put something in gear so that you actually honor what the intent of the bylaw was to allow people to do this thing. Right now, I'm prohibited from, from doing it. I'll point out that in a number of surrounding towns, I don't know, do you have all, you already have this in your packets about surrounding towns? Um, so a lot of towns just don't regulate it at all. Winchester, Belmont, I couldn't find a thing about it. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they don't regulate it at all. Boston did for a while, they tried to regulate it, and you may remember that there was a federal case in 2004 um, which Boston tried to defend for a while and then eventually just sort of gave up and said, you know what, forget it. If anybody has the you know, bad enough taste to play a banjo or an accordion or a bagpipe or something, we got plenty of laws that we can use to harass them without having something specifically about street performances. So they just let it go. Boston doesn't regulate it private property if you want to go out and play in one of the really prime pitches like Quincy Market, you got to get a permit. Gosh, you got to audition for them. Cambridge, you just go down and give them 40 bucks and they give you your permit and the, and the list of rules, which are regulations not in the Cambridge town laws. Any, anyway, the, the, the point is a lot of communities don't even feel like it's worth worrying about. There are plenty of laws about public nuisance and vagrancy and this and that and the other thing that, that, that they can adequately uh, allow the police to, to regulate the situation. I fully support this idea that we have a permitting process that you folks come up with a reasonable set of rules and I'm fully in support of uh, Joe's rules. Uh, they, they seem well thought out and perfectly reasonable to me as a performer. I can live, I can live with that framework easily. So I recommend that you establish a framework that you say you are going to issue permits and you actually do issue permits. And I want permit number one. By <laughs> Six years I've been waiting. Uh, but I, I, I very much endorse this idea. I'm eager to have you all just sort of get it going. Uh, I, I don't overthink this. This is not Doughboy Field. You know, you don't have to worry about 120 decibel. You know, uh, we're talking about low key stuff here, and there are plenty of other regulations that cover those sort of egregious kinds of things that you may be thinking about. Don't overthink it. Just let's get this done. It's been too long that you have been in violation of the First Amendment. Every time busking comes up. The courts just say, you can't do it. This is freedom of expression. You got to let people do this. You, uh, you actually kind of also more or less have to let them pass the hat too. But that's for another night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else who wishes to speak? Come on up. I know we've spent time on this issue, um, so I'll be very brief, but since I'm up next anyway, I just thought I would get in on this article. I'm Stephanie Marlin Curiel, and I'm from the Arlington Cultural Commission, and I just want to, of course, lend our support to both of the past proposals and uh, to Liz's point about uh, poetry touching us in our everyday lives and um, thinking about the way in which we can enhance culture in our town and enhance cultural experience. I think this busker's law of, or bylaw or whatever it will be um, is very important because of the access it gives people to cultural expression and spontaneous cultural expression which gives opens up a, a sense of freedom that is not the same as when you have to go to a performance and sit still. This is a town with a lot of families and families with young children and I'm a parent of children and so you know to to go and to sit somewhere that can sometimes 
be limiting for uh, the cultural experience of both the parent and of course the child because they don't like sitting in still in, in a seat. So this is a chance to just to encounter um, artists just in your midst and experience the town in a new way. One of the assets that Arlington has is its walkability. And if people are walking the streets um, more than they would in other places and they have an opportunity to, to um, experience performance and cultural expression along the way and that will only enhance life more in Arlington and bring more attention and traffic and interest to the town. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Diane. I, I just have a question. Have we or should we refer this also to the Dis Disability Commission for their remarks? I, I'm, not, I'm not unclear on uh, we, the relationship. You know what, I'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one about it. I'm just thinking about when they appeared before us and said things that might affect, that, that we could refer them to them also. But okay. what I'll do is I'll have a conversation with the chairman and then with the town council okay. and address it in the future. Steve. Um, actually, I have a question for Josh. Sure. So we're going to vote, we'll say we'll vote on this night and um, we'll go to town meeting. And then after we have these meetings for further changes, will that also have to go to town meeting? No. Or will, we can make those changes ourselves? I, I don't believe so, no. I think what you're voting to do is to uh, amend the bylaw to put, um, well, you're voting to support taking action with respect to amending the bylaw to put in uh, Mr. Kuro's um, language here about street performances and I think that what everybody's saying is that further regulation which would be under the purview of the selectmen without a bylaw amendment or putting it into the bylaws at all would, would naturally flow from that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'll just say um, I'm very much in support of this and in particular Joe I'm really happy with uh, I, like some of the, the first draft he passed out was longer and this is stripped down and I really love that because it's the, I think it's the way we should do. You put the minimum that you need to in the bylaws and you take the rest of it and you put it in the discretion of people mm -hmm. who can you know make who can quickly. And so I'm really excited to, I think it's the right thing to do and it's the right way to do it. So I'm, I'm really happy about it. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Doug, do you have anything you need? I've got everything I need, thank you. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Mr. Next. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is a related matter on this, if I may, to, yeah. to town council. So if I understand correctly, Mr. Sharp uh, would like to perform, and the bylaw tells him he needs a license. Am I mistaken? Okay. And that license comes from the Board of Selectmen. At present, the license comes from the okay. Board of Selectmen's office. Therefore, yes. I would like to move that this board license Mr. Sharp uh, at this point in time. Of course, obviously, this goes before this town meeting, then has to be approved, and so it would not go into effect until next year. I would like to move, uh, subject to all current bylaws that would be related to this matter, that this board hereby license Mr. Sharp to, Sharp to start performing, uh, and I'd like to hear that myself. I think we have to issue him a permit. Yeah, that's well, it says license. It's license but and we don't have a licensing procedure, but we are authorized to provide a license. That's why I'm putting this to Doug. Yeah, we can make sure that he gets a license. I, 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 the, the process as it is could be more detailed with respect to what's required for a license, but we'll make sure he gets a license. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I'll second, assuming that the motion is in order. I'm I don't, not think, sure I don't it think it is, but Kevin, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I, I Do all of you agree with me that Mr. Sharp should get a license? Can I, can <laughs> I, the, 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 the only, the only uh, caveat on it is that, is that under this structure or any other structure is usually you get a license for a specific period of time. It's not like a, unless the board wants to take an extraordinary measure. I'm, which I'm, <laughs> okay, well, do you agree with me? It's not a formal vote. That Mr. until Kirk. this bylaw goes into effect, we would like to Mr. see Mr. Sharp. Mr. Greeley, I think that we should see um, that the, I will place under consent agenda at the next week an approval for an appropriate okay. license. Okay. Yeah, I think that's. And if fun. you could define the parameters. Yes. I, uh, yes. You, you really. <laughs> the guy <laughs> has waited six years. 
I hope you have an album or something. Do you know that uh, people could right. buy? No. If, no, I'm just thinking of if other things. If it would the streets. Mr. Mr. Lever satisfied. <laughs> Sorry? Have, if I consent again, the agenda could not. Yes, sir. That's, right. That is fine with me. Next up, Article 15, Bylaw Amendment, Cultural Commission. <laughs> and this is a 10 registered voter articles. Stephanie. Green Knight. So I'm Stephanie Marlin Curiel again. Thank you for hearing this um, the article under consideration. Um, I'm here because, as you are aware, we have an Arlington Cultural Council and we now have an Arlington Cultural Commission, and the two names are extremely close in nature and have already been confused, even by commissioners and council members themselves, <laughs> but also in the media, and I'm sure by any of you and um, anyone else who tries to talk about those two distinct bodies. So um, the Cultural Council has requested um, often that we bring this to, you know, th this article up to be able to change this bylaw. So, um, you know, out of respect to them and ourselves, I bring, that, I bring that to you. And since our January meeting was canceled due to snow, we were not able to have an official meeting to discuss the name. So the name is not exactly decided upon yet, but I believe that we have a, uh, and it's not going to be anything radical because you know we are a commission of the town and it should be descriptive and as clear as possible. We simply want to change the acronym so it's not ACC, just like the Cultural Council is ACC. So um, we have some top contenders, but I can save that for our report. I believe that we're scheduled to deliver our report to you on March 10th, and so I would like to be able to bring the name to you as part of that report at that time. What's this? I'm not. What's the scheduled report? I'm not familiar with. The well, um, we we were either asked or we decided that we ought to report to you at some point on what we've been doing. <laughs> so. so it's a requirement of the, okay. The grants, thank By you. January 15th of each year, that's on the books. Right. Oh dear, then I guess we're late. <laughs> but, but so I take it you want to be on March 10th. Yes, we have already requested and believe and offered a spot on March 10th. I'll move approval. Okay. And I, uh, I agree that I find that very confusing as well, mm -hmm. so it will be helpful to me. All right. Uh, we have a motion, we have a second, which I must admit that this is one of the lowest information yeses that I will ever cast. I was going to say, it <laughs> seems like this should have just been the March 10th meeting. Yeah. So we need to tighten that so, up. So, yeah, Doug. Just to clarify the scope of this, this is purely just to vote whether or not the board believes that we should take action with respect to renaming so the Cultural Commission. We don't even have a name yet. No, we won't till March right, 10th. But, let's, uh, but you, they're going to come up with a name. That's right. We're going to like it. And then you're going to put it in the final language, and it's going to come to us for our final approval. And at that moment, if we don't like it, then we're in trouble. Understood. It's not the best way that we've ever done this. I know. I you know I'm. <laughs> if it helps, the top we, contender we, now is like the Cultural the Commission of Arlington. The, that's the, the alternative we could do is just a table. Why don't we table it to March 10th? Really? If they give us the name, and then we vote it all once. Yeah. Yeah. So, Steve. Uh, I'll pull mine, but I'll I think that we don't uh, necessarily need to because I'm comfortable with how the, this would go anyway. But yeah. I'm fine with that. So, if I, if I can just, the, the two sort of options before you would be to table it and to take the very small amount of time at a future meeting to be comfortable with what the recommendation what is. The other thing would basically to be craft a vote that would basically be to change it to whatever is recommended by the Cultural yeah. Commission. I would, so. I, personally, I'm much more comfortable with making a specific recommendation about okay. a specific word personally. And so yeah, where they're on the March 10th agenda for that very yeah. uh, reason yeah. to tell us what the yeah. name change. Let's do it all at once. That's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, we have, so I'm sorry, one moment. Uh, uh, we just, on, on March 6th, it 6th. has to go to the printer. It has to go to the, pr the way. Oh, so we can't wait that way. And well. that's why we do put in the application on that meeting. people have to be prepared for hearing oh. yeah. because we, April, not March. Uh, no, on no, the warrant has to be in by uh, March 6th. We're, we're sending it to the printer yeah. around the 6th. Okay, the we could have wiggle room with a few days, 
but the warrant is going to be in the advocate because we've arranged a mass yeah. mailing that would be on. Uh, Mary this isn't, the, we're talking about what the printing, the selectman's report. The selectman's report. Yeah. Selectman. Right, but the, is the warrant, I guess if it were to be tabled or something, is the warrant language fine? Oh. I the guess warrant language, oh yeah. No. You okay. Yeah. okay, thanks. All right, so. Steve, we're feeling a little guilty about twisting your arm on this one. That's uh, fine. Okay, thank you. Consider it twisted. And so we have a motion from Diane. Is there a second to table? Second. We have a second to table. Um, is there any further discussion about table? So I think we have a we have sentiment of the board that we, in, we I personally will be supporting it. So I think we're going to get to we will be able to count to three when we get there. Uh, we have a motion to table. All those in favor of the motion to table, please say aye. 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 Opposed. That carries. I'm abstaining. Thank you. Uh, Kevin is Well, because I agree, it should be changed, so, but I hear what all of you are saying. So we're, 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 we'll come back. Opening the door. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this does indeed trigger what the, the, the Mary, uh, Mary is trying to say, which, is, uh, which I completely agree with, which is uh, we are, have a schedule of hearings. So we, have we shared it with, uh, we should make sure that we should share that sh schedule of hearings. And then make sure that everyone is ready because uh, to, we're, we're ready so that then we can uh, move through them so that we can get the report done and Doug isn't you know staying up yeah. late writing. We do. Them. Our process is like tomorrow yeah. I'd release for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, and that way people don't get confused on because we have departments that, that issue yeah. and, and you know issue comments and stuff. If you want it out all, all at once, I'd be happy to do it. We've just found historically this is what works. Yeah. But I already have the emails waiting. They're already uh, drafted and waiting to be sent. Okay. So. Uh, Joe? I, I want to take some of the, uh, the, 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 the blame for some of this confusion uh, myself because uh, I knew that the, Stephanie brought this issue to me and I knew that the Cultural Commission had not been able to meet and I recommended that in order to get it in under the wire that she bring it as a 10 registered voter mm -hmm. article to get it in. Yep. under the wire, but um, I didn't realize it was going to be scheduled for the first the first meeting. So I, I apologize if <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the rest of the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so moving on then, Article 19. We have junk <coughs> cars enforcement uh, and a memo from Doug. Which is sorry, uh, Adam and Sis. Who's the yeah, correct? Christine's uh, here to speak. Excellent. I apologize. Christine, welcome. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, so before you is uh, a proposal to amend the enforcement of the junk car bylaw. Uh, this proposal would allow the Board of Health to enforce in addition to the police department. Uh, so as it stands currently, um, the health department office uh, is typically called out for dilapidated properties, for um, properties where there may be a lot of debris and possibly junk cars stored. Um, this bylaw would allow the, the health department staff to cite the property owner for that violation, rather than having to call the police department each day that the violation exists. Move reasonable action. Second. Motion second. Is there any questions? This is a public hearing. Are there any comment from the audience on about junk car enforcement? Anyone else? Doug, you okay? Got it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. I think we should have Christine name the Cultural Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Article 25 moves the table. Second. But, but could I just ask why? And isn't that, that's the, a routine. The manager asked us to. I understand. I'm asking him why. Oh, Is I'm that all right? No, so no. Uh, last year at uh, town meeting at the board's request, there was a uh, sort of a, a greater level of detail requested to back up the revolving funds and there was not time to prepare that material. All right, tonight. okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I no, that's right, but right. revolving funds is a routine article, so, but I understand you should get more detail. Thank you. Yeah. It, I think, yeah. <coughs> so we have a motion to table. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, correspondence received. Uh, Sherry Barron, Bates Road. Janice Bakey, um, Public Spaces. Phil McCarthy, Public Spaces. And this is specifically both those related to the charges and a uh, the Department of Telecommunication and Cable about the expiring license for our um, Comcast or cable providers, I should say, in general. Diane. Uh, I guess first move receipt. And, yep. then, and then I just had um, a question on 
the notification for the license expiration notice. I believe we are now working with the time running date of March 26th of this year. So what I'd like to know either tonight or at a future meeting, what it is we need to start doing between now and March 26th of this year. Um, because I know we've had people from the Cable Advisory Committee over the past year before us saying, hey, it's coming up soon, you gotta hire a consultant, you gotta do a study. I'm, d I'm just picking out phrases, I'm not saying that. So I just wanna make sure that we now have the clock running, which we do, and is it the town manager or town council that will sort of guide us through that? Probably cooperatively, and I, I think I already have on my schedule a meeting with John Marr from the Cable Advisory Committee, I can confirm that, but I think by the next board meeting we can have uh, a rough schedule for how I have it in my head that we have to submit a letter by March 26th of, of this year. I think it, actually it's March 26th is the first day that we can do it and then we have six because we have, six it, it, we have to we have to start between 36 and 30 months and 36 months starts on March 26th. So March 26th is when we are eligible to fire the starting gun mm -hmm. and we must fire that gun within six months. So we're yeah. Well, whatever, I know John Confirm Marr that. was yeah, advocating yeah. for. It behooves for us to be prepared. Whatever you all say, so. I've also had preliminary discussions with Mr. Marr about this um, and confirmed Mr. Dunn's uh, statement about that. But basically, uh, we want to try to have our negotiations on this simultaneously on the, I believe, three contracts that we have. And they'll all be coming into play basically this spring. So we're, we're on top of it. Can I also suggest that um, we refer the letter from Sherry Barron to the planning department? Just uh, because, I mean, as to me, as all correspondence and all conversations about the Mass Ave project and the rebuild associated with that, uh, it, you know, they're the right place to receive that conversation and, and hear the conversation. Well, if so, then I need to write a response since I'm the one she talks about in there and misquotes what I said. So if you want to refer it, I ask you to wait until I respond. Oh, really? Okay. It's baloney what she said, I claim. Well, okay. Um, so if you're gonna refer it, that's all I just asked that I be able to write a response to it. Uh, it's, you know, why these people won't give up, I don't know. But. Okay. Uh, I, I certainly, obviously, have no problem with you, with you writing a response. I just, frankly, didn't anticipate it would be controversial. But that you're referring it. That's so. If you're referring it somewhere else, I want to. Okay. All right. Uh, then I, uh, it's, I, I'm not. It's up to the board. But I, I think that would be what I would recommend. Any further conversation or other items on there? All those in favor of the motion as made by Mrs. Hahn. Uh, oh, wait, wait. wait sorry. Time. So on another one. Yeah. Uh, th which is uh, from Phil McCarthy. I. You. Uh, it, it's just related to. You were going to talk yeah. about this on the new business. So I, I think uh, addressing the issue of the fees being charged at the Central School uh, and Jefferson Cutter House, this is a, a good time to address that. So at the board's last meeting, uh, there was a discussion also under correspondence received of concern by some community groups or we'll call them community <coughs> stewardship groups uh, in regards to the newly um, implemented fee schedule. So I, I've really spent a good portion of the last two weeks uh, two weeks working with Carol Kowalski, some members of my own staff, as well as Mike Kerr from the ARB looking at this uh, issue. And one, one thing that sort of remains clear is that it is a very complex issue and there are remaining concerns about personal safety and property safety in using those buildings as they're currently used. It's also clear that the original intention of the use of that building as um, having you know, some private tenants renting and then also providing a community space has evolved over time. The use has changed and it's become more complex. So it's not what it was uh, 30 some years ago when it was created. Um, with that said, the implementation of the fees to create uh, a system of better management had an unintended, unintended consequence of um, creating a feeling of alienation or um, non-appreciation among our community stewardship groups. So, um, finalized this in conversation today with uh, Mike Kerr, Chairman of the ARB, and Carol Kowalski. We're going to freeze all fees for these community stewardship groups um, and go back to the drawing board um, on how we want to better manage the property. So um, from today forward, that will be frozen. We will keep the building monitors in place um, in terms of being able to open and close the building and better 
arbitrate who has rooms scheduled. Um, so there probably will be some changes going forward in how we use the space and better manage the rooms and make sure that the tenants are being treated fairly. Um, but again, as of today, for those community groups uh, that use the space, there will be no fees. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion. I don't think we actually got a second on Mr. Muhan's motion. Second. Or seat. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, new business. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes, we have some new business. Sorry. Three things. Um, there was an email that was sent out um, from Meals on Wheels campaign, I think, um, to the selectmen. I have not seen it. And uh, I received a call today asking, um, are any of you intending to go? And it could be on... Um, the course of an hour to an hour and a half if you want to attend the whole Meals for Wheel, Wheels for Meals ride. Or you could just show up, meet the driver, maybe go to one home or, or you know, one place and um, have a picture taken, that sort of a thing. So um, she needs to, the woman who called really needs to have an idea. So if you could get in touch with me by tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. I'd love to say nobody's coming or you know, these three people will come and here's their contact. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, all righty. Um, uh, the next thing, uh, the manager's review, um, we're still waiting for a couple to show up in the office, so if you could take care of that as soon as possible. And I did get a call from Human Resources, uh, which I think they're going, uh, you know, Karen's gonna be working with you all to put that together, okay? Um, Mine's done. I <laughs> Any hours. I know. I know. It's a lot of reading <laughs> enjoyment for you, Mr. Chappell. You'll get it first thing in the morning. Um, the more serious thing of this is that we got a request for um, uh, for the selectmen to take a look at for this year in the warrant, uh, possibly increasing um, our alcohol licenses. The number we currently have fifteen in for restaurants. Tent. For restaurants, right, Sec it's a section 12. Um, I left, um, I put a piece of paper, uh, you know, on your desk tonight, and the timing is right. Uh, you know, historically, you know, you can add a line article. Uh, the process takes a year to a year and a half, uh, so it's a long process. Um, we've had no issues uh, with the 15. It was an arbitrary number that was picked at 15, the state says for sure we can offer more. Um, so I'm putting it out to you if you want to take a look at it at the next meeting or whenever. It is on uh, open warrant day for the special town meeting tomorrow, which is the other thing you know we wanted to announce that, you know, from eight to four tomorrow. Kevin? This is for full. Correct. This is all alcohol. Correct. Yeah, I, I'd like to move that we um, instruct our excellent town council to uh, draft a warrant article that would increase the current number from 15 to 20. Okay. Uh, Second. You have a motion. So, uh, for the purposes of open meeting law and notification and stuff like that, the, I definitely I agree with the sentiment. But let's put it on the agenda for two weeks from now and, uh, and get it there. And Adam. So procedurally, yeah. the, the special town meeting is open tomorrow, so it could be placed there. Otherwise, I, I would defer to Doug, but I believe the board would need to vote to reopen the warrant uh, at some point to place, uh, if it was don't going to the annual town meeting. Yeah, so the place in the special, and then we'd have a hearing. No, don't we have until March 6th, we can insert a warrant article into our regular, is, hasn't that always been? Historically, uh, the selectmen and the town manager's office on Up have the had the leeway on that, yeah. but. Yeah. So, so Doug, how about the, so? How about this? The mayor, I think I see a way for us to to do what we want, which is Doug figure out whether we can add an article to the warrant or not to the regular warrant or not, and if not, um, Adam, I suspect that it would be wonderful if the town manager were to request putting on the special town meeting a, a warrant okay. article, and then we can the the selectmen can have a hearing on that. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? I get it. Is in general, or what you say, yeah. Diane. And can I just say procedurally that um, we're all referencing a piece of correspondence that was received today by the selectman's office, February 20th. I mean, fe February 10th, 
uh, at 3.54 p.m. Um, by a Mr. Golden. Um, and that's from where the, okay. the beginning of this mm. conversation came. Okay. Good point. So for the purposes of open meeting law, it is an unanticipated matter that came up, Correct. but also um, I'll look into the procedure by which we can do what my understanding is a historical precedent for adding an article. It may just be that we need to technically open the article. If we don't, I won't make it any more complicated. Okay, yeah. And also from, from the point of the open meeting law, I have, um, I have absolutely no, I, I'm, I feel very comfortable with this because the actual substance of what we will be voting on is, yes, is, is at a future meeting. And we're really only putting it on the agenda, mm -hmm. which is something that we can do without, without notification. Of course. Because, you know, the agenda. No. Marianne, more. Could I, yeah, could I just ask one thing on, while Doug's doing that, could he check if it's okay with Mr. Greeley to see if unlimited instead of going up in about the five increment because Let, it is yeah. a lengthy uh, process if that's good to the board if it's not that's fine you know so if you could tell us what our options are i will right. thank you marianne you have any other that's it you know oh, thank busy, you very much, busy, thank busy. You very much. <laughs> doug no new business adam uh, so only one additional piece of new business. I uh, emailed the board today with a memo in regards to a uh, solid waste disposal proposal and also put a paper copy on the board's desk tonight. Uh, no need for action tonight, but I'd ask that the board review it and just give me any feedback that they have. Uh, I know some board members already have and I appreciate that very much. Uh, it's a very positive financial uh, proposal for the town. Um, I think we're heading in the right direction. And again, if you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. Anything else? That's all I have. Kevin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have two things. One is a draft of a letter that I put on your desk just to know if the uh, board is okay with me uh, sending that along to the uh, Public Memorial Committee. This is a matter related to the hearing room named after Charles Lyon. Yeah, we took a vote at our last meeting. And this so looks I good just, to me. I just want your approval on the wording, if that's okay. It's, it's good to me. Okay. Anybody else? Right. No. Okay. Uh, thank you. The other one is that we were copied on a letter that was sent to, uh, that was in our packets uh, if, if, and it had to do with a uh, particular landlord and a renter mm -hmm. and I won't get into any names. I just would like the board to know I looked into it and this matter has been both before the Attorney General, a Small Claims Court, a mediator, a settlement uh, has been determined and signed and a release by the author of that, so in essence, I've been well dealt with. Thank you, sir. Diane? Oh, oops. I, I'm so sorry. Um, I, we, you know, unfortunately, we talked about Coach Ed Burns, and uh, I just would like to ask people, you know, when you say your prayers tonight, to put one in for Paul Gallagher, who passed away this, this past week, mm. uh, an original member of the select films. Yeah, so. <laughs> God Ooh, bless. Also sang very well. Yeah, he was quite I a like some of its current. So an unusual <laughs> member of the select. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt and Kevin, no new business. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Joe. Um, I just want to let everyone know that the, um, the next round of the uh, master plan public forums will be taking place this Thursday, um, I believe, at the, at the Senior Center. The subject... Uh, this month will be uh, public facilities and recreation that's open to the public and I, b I believe the working papers are up on on the website if they aren't yet they will be very soon um, and uh, they'll uh, I'm sure like the last time that the uh, the town uh, announcement was will carry all of the deadlines for, for feedback on those um, uh, also I it's too bad that um, Ms. Bongiorno is no longer here I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the um, Health and Human Services and the Police Department and some of our um, um, volunteer service, volunteer and you know, uh, non-governmental service agencies that uh, conducted the um, domestic violence forum here um, last week. It was very timely and very interesting, um, and um, I definitely l learned a lot. And uh, it's it's great to see the way that our various departments cooperate so well. Um, on on uh, these matters, and we have a police department that really sees itself as a as a human services uh, agency as much as anything, and 
um, it was very timely and um, one of, I think it was it was filmed for ACMI so anyone who wasn't able to catch it should should look that up and, and try to try to catch it for sure no, no further business thank you Joe Steve um, yeah just one thing quickly our um, good friend on the transportation advisory committee Richard Turcott um, just had his first book released today the Trediac agenda uh, you can find it on Amazon Amazon or smash words I believe is what he said in the email but um, I haven't read it obviously it came out today but I just wanted to give him a quick plug and uh, I hope everyone enjoys it uh, do you I have the description there because uh, the description I read was something about an insidious group of government <laughs> officials seeking to uh, <laughs> increase their power and such and I, I did send him a question about what he was inspired by anyone in particular uh, I have no new business to move to adjourn you have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Yes, aye. Aye. And I have to embrace it. I know. Well, you know, you want to go now? You live to fight another day.